Hi again then guys and welcome to episode 101 of B-Road Ballers in this particular pick on Gran Turismo 6 with one of the best examples I would say of an all-round hot hatch which we have on that game the Volkswagen Golf Mark IV R32. Now of course there have been other versions essentially of this grade model since then of course there was the Mark V R32 and then you had the R instead of the R32 Personally, I kind of miss the 3.2 litre unit, the naturally aspirated engine to me is just cooler. It's bigger, bulkier, heavier, but there's just something cooler about having a big engine like that in a small, modern, non-American hatch. Maybe that's just me though. The 2 litre engine is great of course in the Golf R's, and it's the way to go as far as efficiency and performance combined. This one though is kind of from that era where cars weren't being as efficiently developed as possible and when you had a hot hatch it went much more for pure performance than for efficiency this is a great example of that and going for pure performance in the case of this car on a racing game was the right thing to do and that is very clearly borne out by the fact that the even faster version of this Golf, the HPA Motorsports Golf, which many of you guys know, especially those who have been around on the channel for longer, is my favourite hatchback on Gran Turismo 6, and it's by far the fastest hatchback in the game, over 250 miles per hour, even without NOS, is based on this. It's also a Mark IV Golf, but that one of course has significantly more power, and it's turbo aspirated, whereas this one cannot be. Now that's unfortunate, because although you still wouldn't get 720 plus horsepower out of this, you could get maybe somewhere in the region of 520, 550, something like that, because even in its naturally aspirated form, this car can be tuned up to 461 horsepower. That is a powerful naturally aspirated hatch. In fact, it's one of the most powerful hatches in the game, especially when you factor in non-turbo or non-supercharged cars. The torque is also very high, which isn't surprising for a bigger engine. 390 foot-pounds at only 4,000 RPM is a great number to be working with. But the thing which really wraps up the whole package nicely to make it not just a straight-line machine, which is kind of the disadvantage of the HPA Golf, it's great in a straight line, but not so much around corners, is that this one is a lot lighter than you would probably expect a modern all-wheel drive German hatchback with a big engine to be. It only weighs 1201 kilos with the full weight loss package. That's very impressive for an all-wheel drive hatchback. In fact, that gives some front or even rear-wheel drive hatches a great run for their money as well. Now, the PP level is reasonably high. It's not insane, but 534 is pretty high for a hatch. Not the highest, but it's up there with them. And of course, we have compared this car to some of the other hatches in a dedicated rivals match. The price on this version is pretty high, but at the same time, I would say it's definitely worth it. 43 grand doesn't sound like a massive amount on Gran Turismo, but for a hatchback, that's quite a bit. That's literally Toyota Supra money. So if you put it in that kind of context, it sounds like more than it really is but it is definitely worth buying if you are a hatchback fan. Of course, it's not as quick as the HPA version, but around the track, it can give even that model a surprisingly good run for its money, because although it doesn't have the straight line performance, especially top end, it can do around 210, 215 quite easily, which isn't bad, but it's the cornering on this version, which is so much better than the HPA Golf. And also the fact that it's naturally aspirated instead of turbocharged means that you don't get that chronic lag which that car suffers from. Now with NOS of course you can overcome that and it's again a monster off the line whereas this one is already great off the line and NOS just makes it even better. With 461 horsepower and the kind of straight line performance that it has most racing situations in the game will be situations that this car can easily cope with. It's only the longest possible straights of tracks like the Le Mans or Route 7 or of course Route X where you can really notice that change in speed. On other tracks, especially twistier ones, you just don't see it because it's got great cornering ability which can leave plenty of other hatches behind. And of course the all-wheel drive factor as well means that off-road Again, it's easily going to beat pretty much any front-wheel drive hatchback. So overall, although it's not necessarily the best all-round hot hatch, 
it's definitely up there with the best of them. And if you haven't tried the R32 Golf yet, which I think most hatch fans doubtless will have, then definitely get on it. If you are going to buy one version of the two, I would probably recommend the HPA, purely because of how overwhelmingly fast it is and how significant it is overall in the game, but if you're looking purely for a track car, then this is probably the better option of the two, definitely when you factor in price and handling. But that's it for this pick overall, I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.